Okay, Lena is asleep, so I'm taking a few minutes to play Agatha Christie, The ABC Murders. And I don't quite it may be time remember. to go to Scotland Yard. I don't quite remember what we're supposed to be doing, but let's go to Scotland Yard. To Scotland Yard, please. Growing up, my grandmother loved um, Hercule Poirot, my mother loved Hercule Poirot, and as a teenager, I read all the books, and since I've listened to the audiobooks and abridged audiobook versions, dramatized audiobook versions, adapt adaptations for the BBC, and I've just always really enjoyed um, Agatha Christie novels. So I was pretty excited to find this this game. And it has good points and bad points. Jap appears to be snowed under. Jap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilancy. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so. Good God, Poirot. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. Okay. So, the last victim was Alice Asher in Andover. So I think we can guess that the next victim's name will start with a B. I suspect that the name C. of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asher clearly written of the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received the letter mentioned in Bexhill, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Yeah, we should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jab, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Okay. Let's see if we can find Inspector Jap. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking on the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. 
That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! <laughs> Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jack waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. These marks have been left by a rope or a braided cloth. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. ABC guide opened to the B the section. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. Hmm. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat, and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The one common point is the ABC guides, which is, I think it's a British railway guide. I think it still exists today. The 
medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. Appears to be a six on this key, so I'm going to see if one of these beach houses has the number six on it. Dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Ginger Betty's Cat first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called? Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have her address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen.
What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? So it looks like Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. I should consult the register first. He wants to consult the register first, apparently. Should have clicked on something there, I guess. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Ah. Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? Seven, seven thirty. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. No, something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Most probably a family. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer. Betty served a family and a man on his own, a whiskey drinker, maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Bernard will not be coming today. She has just been found, dead, on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Oh, 
Okay. Should I choose say that on the contrary it is an advert for the town or ask what she knows about Betty? Hmm. I know one will probably offend her and one will probably get the answer. What, what does she know? What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee. Her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. Hmm. She may recognize the man in the photo, even if she doesn't know it was Betty's this boyfriend. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him, all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Hmm. Ask if their relationship was going well. Or say that young people no longer have morals. She would probably like that one. I find young people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. Do you know the reason for their dispute? I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me. I have work Ooh, to do. I've annoyed her. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, Mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. Okay, we'll go see Betty. Or Betty's family. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? Well, of course it is. It says Ginger Cat Restaurant right there. This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. Okay. I think we've gone past the Barnard's house. Luckily for me, you have an exceptional sense of direction, Hastings. You are a great explorer. it? Why is he standing there? How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I 
I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe. Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. Something's not wrong with them. her makeup. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. The very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? I'm trying. What is she feeling at the moment? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Okay. Did Betty go out often? My sister wasn't a child, sir. She used to go out. She enjoyed films, dancing. She was a very good girl who didn't hang around with men. That's what they always say, no? Now, should I choose insist on the truth or sympathize with her grief? She's angry, not just grieving. So sympathizing might be a bad idea. We don't want to anger her more. Let's go with sympathize with the her grief. making you bitter, Mademoiselle Barnard. I'm not interested in your compassion, Mr. Poirot. Très bien, Mademoiselle. Would you at least oh. tell me a little about Betty's young man? His name is Donald Fraser, a very nice young man. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. Well, I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him. Alright.
have to check the mustache. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. Interesting observation. Got to check the mustaches again. Just in case. They could have gotten ruffled going up the stairs. It looks like Betty was also a music lover. The same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. A box of new stockings. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. She liked luxury and going out, and being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? Hmm. Something on this clock bothers me. <sighs> this metal disc. Oh, I'm stuck. Okay. Let's see. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn hands. are blocked by these wooden panels. The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. Definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. Hmm. Oh. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. The school be slightly loose. 
Hmm, could this school be slightly loose? Huh? This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. Hmm. Can I click on this one? Oh. Good. It should be possible to oh, open the wooden okay. panel. Look, a key. This could be useful. Let's try these, this key on these cogs. Oh. The central cog is blocked. Okay. Something clicked on the front of the clock. On the front? Oh. A new lock has appeared. What does it open? Opens the other door. Oh, do you see that? Three over two. And one over two. Hmm. This could be useful. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for. But you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again, Adrian. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company. My dearest Betty. This small key should be useful to me. Another key? I've finished with this subject. Oh, okay. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Hmm. a phonograph downstairs so maybe Betty's record is over there let me see Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? Oh, and there it is. This looks like sulfur. This 
looks like sulfash. Okay. That doesn't work. I must have. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. I cannot open it. It looks like the mechanism is blocking it. is bound to be a clue somewhere. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. I have the record, but it's not letting me put it on yet. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Seven eight T is written on Betty's record. And I'll bet that's what I need over here. I don't know what kind of phonograph this is where you have to put in all these steps. I've never seen anyone like it. Any any phonograph like it. Just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. Finally. 
Okay. That doesn't work. I've <laughs> <have> forgotten step. <laughs> There we go. Let's see if we can do that. What? Going in there, am I missing something? Ah, oh, yes, the hand crank. Looks like something goes in here. Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes. <laughs> Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her thought? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Family photos and fires. It is not the right time. <laughs> okay. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man, with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Okay, should I ask if Donald was in love with Betty? Or if Donald was jealous? Was he a jealous boyfriend or was he in love we'll go with ask if Donald was in love Donald with Betty to be very much in love with your sister yes he was mad about her mad you say being madly in love can often be destructive and mr. Fraser was known for being jealous I believe no more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. Hmm.
You are a poor liar, Mademoiselle Bernard. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot, but I do not see why you are interested in our humble little crime. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man. Slightly reserved, too. And as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day... One day... Well? He'd commit murder. What do you think? Should I ask if Donald really could have killed Betty? Or if... If she, Megan Barnard, fears that Donald is a suspect. Okay. Let's see if this is right. So you were afraid that he would become our main suspect. I know that Fraser was jealous. But I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Exactly. Had you not told me about the case, I would never have dared to tell you about this little matter. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Hmm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. What had Betty planned to do with her evening? Oh, so she had her a bunch of dresses out, like she was having trouble choosing which one. So she was planning on make on meeting someone. used to go out a great deal. Betty lied to Donald about what she was planning to do the day before. Or should I go with Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. Hmm. I'll try this one. And it doesn't look like that's right. So I will choose Betty Lied to Donald. And that's not right either. Hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, there we go. Betty lied to Donald because she had a date with another man. Did Betty know her assailant? The man seduced Betty before strangling Let's her. now try and get our brain cells to work. Megan has a soft spot for Donald. Oh. She's the sole heir. But that's not a motive, apparently. Megan was jealous of Betty. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go get Donald Fraser before the police get to him. You've seen Fraser, Hastings. What is your feeling? He's a big chap. Fragile isn't exactly the word that springs to mind. I talked to his landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at 11. Fraser wasn't home yet. Yeah. Megan Barnard said he is a reserved character, but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You Hercule Poirot? Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me. Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. This man looks suspicious. Fraser is in a terrible state, as if he hadn't slept all night, and he's drinking white horse. Leave me alone. Tell me that it's a mistake, that Betty isn't dead. Sadly, your lady friend has been She's murdered, dead. Mr. We Fraser. saw her on the beach. Oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. Okay. Did you visit Betty yesterday afternoon? No, I haven't seen Betty for two days. I was at the office yesterday afternoon. Can you prove that? Of course. But why this question? Betty died yesterday evening, didn't she? Should I try ask if he likes white horse whiskey, which seems obvious since he's drinking it, 
or tell him that he is a suspect. That one worked really well on Megan. Betty was murdered during the night, but that does not prove that she did not meet a murderer earlier in the day. So am I a suspect? Everybody close to Betty is a suspect, Mr. Fraser. I would be a very poor detective if I did not examine all possible eventualities. Do you know what Betty's plans were yesterday evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. Do we think that Donald believed Betty? Or should we tell him that her sister was in London? Hmm. Why he believed. And you believed her? And why not, sir? She was my fiance. That did not stop her from lying to you before. Betty was not a bad girl, but she did like to take advantage of a success with men. How dare you sully her memory? Hmm. This he is fragile. As Megan says, that's the key here, I think. I am not interested in memories of her, Mr. Fraser. I am looking for a killer, and I need you to be my closest ally. That is, unless you have something to hide. Of course I don't. Très bien. So, what were we saying? Where were you yesterday evening? Uh, I looked everywhere for her, but in vain. When she said she was going to have dinner with her sister on a weekday, I thought it was strange. I tried not to think about it, but I was like a lion in a cage. I was convinced she was lying. So I went round all the restaurants in the town. When I didn't find her, I went to the next town. But nothing. I must have got home about midnight or one o'clock. Did anybody see you? I don't think so. I didn't talk to anybody. I was so furious. Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poirot. I thought the victim's young man was here. Yes, he's all yours, Chief Inspector. We got to him first. Ha ha ha. Let's now try and get our brain cells to work.
Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree, without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. Okay, time for reconstruction. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around the waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to at number five. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. That's we found her purse, so Betty should get changed. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. They keep walking, then she removes a belt. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. That is exactly what happened. I did it. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. Generous? The murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless, but not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. Okay. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. I'm coming, Poirot. According to the guide, the next train departs shortly. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. Jap has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Oh, we've received a letter. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. 
He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Guard. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Hello, chap. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. It is not a good time. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. <laughs> Hastings, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. For the same. It really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voila! It only took a minute. Poirot, you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Hmm. Miss Haste, Hastings tore the envelope. White Horse Mansions. So Perot actually lives, I think, at White, yes, White Haven Mansions. Poor Mr. Poirot. Not so good at this little. It is not the right time. Okay, so. Unfortunately, we need to compare the two letters. It's something that's not very fun about this game. You have to compare the right. letters each Let us time. Let's compare this new letter with the second one. When it's obvious. Let us examine this more closely. Okay. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. But it's driving home yes, the point. Yes, this eye is weird. Uh, that there's certain defects right. in the typewriter. Let us compare this with the other letter. Certain defects in the typewriter that uh, are the same in yes. each letter. The eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm. 
Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some others. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us... Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Good. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So the letter accidentally the letter arrived, should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. That's snail mail for you. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap. Hey. have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark? The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. waking up so that is all for today the victim is called sir carmichael clark one of the best throat specialists in london the body was still warm when we found it if we had been warned earlier we definitely it appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter a mistake lucky for him and what if he did it on purpose <laughs> 